My name is Karen Weinberg. I'm one of the owners of Three Corner Field Farm, which is in Shushan, New York. It's about 200 miles due north of the city, right on the border with Vermont. I've been part of it for the last 11 years that we've been doing this. You know, there's more and more people who are interested in knowing where their food comes from, and you know, it's sort of started slowly. Come. <laughs> started slowly, and I think it's you know, it's right now it's almost. Uh, you know, it's almost amazing how many people, you know, are interested in going to farmers markets, purchasing food from people who they know. Mm -hmm. anyway, there's always a place for a local grocery store, and better than to buy at the local grocer than a big box store or a big discount store. But as far as um, the type of food that is sold there, their stuff is all coming from a big purveyor. It's all, most of it's been brought in from outside the area. Um, it's been shipped, it's been you know, grown to be shipped, it's been shipped, it's the way it's been grown is very conventionally. I think if you want to know more about your food and you want to be able to make choices about your own consumption and health, then you have to go to a place where the people who are actually producing the food are able to answer the questions for you so that you can make an informed decision. And that's not the grocery store. And even if they know where it's coming from, they don't necessarily can't necessarily answer specific questions about how were the animals treated, how were they raised, what did they eat, you know, what was the cheese made from, you know. And I think that just by definition, if it's being sold at a big store like that, it's not coming from a smaller farm. So the chances are that it was more conventionally raised, um, whether it's a vegetable or, a, or an animal. You know, small farmers like me, we don't stock the shelf for cold foods. I think that people, um, you, you want to keep people in business who surround you and who will be there and if you show loyalty to them, they'll show loyalty to you. Came out in the rain for this, thank yes, you. <laughs> so I'm Robin Puskis, I'm a chef and I'm doing a cooking demonstration for Grow NYC as part of the Green Market program. Uh, the farmer's market has always been dedicated to that. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? Good. It's always been dedicated to buying local. I know that there's uh, restrictions on farmers that can't be further than a certain number of miles from uh, the city. Direct sales for our small farmers, so instead of having to go through a, um, a distributor or have to pay uh, any sort of secondary retail, they're able to get the most amount of profit by um, having their customers buy from them directly. And our small farmers who are here are really doing something that's counter to um, enormous corporate farms. And if we don't have the farmers here doing that, that history is going to be lost entirely. So this is the only way that we're able to really keep that alive. You know, New Paltz and uh, other places where a lot of farmers are concentrated, the climate of those areas, the cultural climate, is very much affected by being able to have farmers who are farming full time and able to make a living at doing that. So I think it shapes both cultures as much as it does the culture here. Okay. Uh, oh, you it's, me? it's all ready. This is the recipe right here. Uh, My name is Patrice uh, Demay. I'm the owner of the winery. Uh, the winery is located in the Finger Lakes, upstate New York. So we're in uh, the base of uh, Cuca Lake, which is um, in Hammondsport. We have we do about 5,000 cases of wine a year and champagne, and we uh, operate on a 17-acre uh, uh, property. Uh, you know, to me, it's um, a lot of people are buying local, but you know, still you you have a lot of the New Yorkers that do not. New York City buys 30 percent of the uh, United States wines. Out of that, uh, 20, about 26, 27 is from France. The rest of it falls in California, you know, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Italy, and all that. Uh, they buy zero from New York State. Uh, they, they absolutely have no um, ID to, you know, actually make their state benefit from it. They really couldn't care less. Well, the people should come, and uh, there's there's probably about three or four wineries that come to these uh, to these markets. Uh, and you know, we basically I'm the owner, so I, you know, I'm I'm the one that comes out. Uh, a lot of us uh, own the wineries and come here because we try to sell it and represent what we are. Uh, I think they should be um, people should demand it more. 
they should, uh, you know, the, the problem doesn't lay be so much between the people in New York City. It lays with a lot of distributors. They, they would rather push, um, you know, something from Europe that uh, a lot of them are subsidized from Europe. Uh, so basically the government, you know, sells it to the, you know, to the distributor for nothing. Uh, if you go to some of the, you know, local places, I'm not going to mention the name because I don't want to get sued, but you get some of these wine shops that are, you know, under these grocery store uh, name, uh, they, they can sell you a Pinot Noir for, you know, three or four dollars. Uh, why? is because they're subsidized in these countries. You buy wine from Chile or Argentina. A lot of them have no regulation on their spray. People say, oh yeah, they're great wine. But it doesn't mean that you know it's healthy for you. When you go down to um, Mexico or it's also you know Argentina, they still use DDT and stuff like that there. So, but they import it. Nobody regulates. I can actually buy those same Pinot Noir for probably about 35, 40 cents a bottle. So these guys are making a, a, a fortune selling a bottle of Pinot for four, five, six, seven, eight dollars. Americans, you know, in New York City, saying they're buying great wines. They're buying actually junk. But, you know, it sells it's because the price is very low. So for us to, to basically make a profit on a bottle of Pinot Noir, for example, we'd have to sell that Pinot for 18 to $20 dollars a bottle. How can you compete with a, a $3, $4 bottle? Uh, you know, if you, if you buy local, it helps the, your local economy because it all, it all entwines together. You know, if you buy from me, you buy from somebody else that grows something in New York State. Uh, you know, so it's it's um, if you if you help your own economy in in a state, then it creates jobs for this area. When you buy outside of that, then you create a job for someplace else. So yeah, buying local really does help. Now they stop coming, and then you make that all this. We've been trying for the last 30 years to pierce the New York market. We've I think we've done a, a, a good job, but it's there's a lot to be done. And with roving acres fall, hand over to Jersey. Well, the local parks are the properties that are around them. So if they don't support those farms, those farms will be turned into something other than farms, probably built on them. Uh, puts money back into their local economy as opposed to multinational economy. And you have a better idea of what you're getting, both nutritional additives. And you actually have a face behind the farm where the product is going that you're consuming. The other side of it is that family-run farms, small local farms, their reputation and the name of the farm is all they have. They can't change names, they can't relabel their product, they can't hide, they're right there. So if people have complaints or issues, they're very aggressive. Salmonella scare from last August, everybody was so concerned about chicken eggs, chicken eggs, but they missed the whole point. The point being, those eggs were from April. They'll see buying local is a little bit more expensive than buying from the commercial box store. But then again, all their subsidies, they're subsidizing the box stores, not the local farm. The running joke by us is there are a couple of farms that have a bale of hay outside of their barn, and on it they have a sign that says, this is my government bailout. My name is Gail Bilto, and the farm is called Best Farm Kitchen. We're located in Stuyvesant Falls, New York. The green market has been going on for 35 years. So uh, obviously we're all northeastern United States. That's the whole mission of the green market has always been to help small farms stay in existence and to get fresh produce to New Yorkers. That has been their mission for 35 years. Um, obviously the people who come here want to buy local. They also do because they know they know the people that they're dealing with. They can talk directly sometimes to the farmers. You can depend on the freshness. And that's true of anything that's freshly grown and even our stuff. We buy it in season, freeze it so that it is, it is fresh immediately. And then we can make small batches all year long. So we're not making like a big production line and selling it, you know, two years down the road. Mm -hmm. We're making it in right up to when we need it. Yeah. In the green market, you're helping small farms, um, and you want them to stay alive. You want things to be as closely grown to your community as you can get, so so you can build the freshness.